All right, hey, Kyle DeFore here, talking about my EDC, Everyday Carry. What I carry 90, 95% of the time, I start out with flashlights. Uh, this is a Streamlight, ProTac 1L-1AA. It's uh, commonly what we refer to as a dual fuel. So, it will take a AA battery or a CR123. Obviously, with a CR123, light's a little brighter. AA, it goes down a little bit, but on a CR123, about a, uh, 350 lumens. Things I like about Streamlight, the clip system on it is, um, it kind of, it goes both ways and you don't have to reverse the, the clip and you don't have to take screws out. I, I like that a lot. I also like that they recess the tail cap so I can lay my finger across if I want to go momentary and turn it on uh, without having to click it on and, and off uh, independently. Next thing I carry, I carry a little multi-tool, but this is a Swiss Army knife. It's a soldier version. It's an old one. If you know anything about the soldier versions, you'll see on the back of the blade is the year it was made. This is 1984. I actually found this in the woods near my house when I was a kid, and I held on to it ever since. I don't really need a lot of the other things, just a, you know, basically a Phillips and a flathead and a little blade to cut boxes open. So I always carry that with me. Of course, an iPhone, um, you know, this modern communication stuff. Uh, the blade, next thing I carry, this is an Amtac Minuteman. It's my favorite uh, blade right now. I think as far as a three to four inch blade, it's going to be hard to beat this. The handle design, the blade design, it's all Syot Kali oriented. This is made by my friend Bill Rapier from his company Amtac. And uh, I've never found a blade that feels better in the hand and actually does what I would want a blade to do. The sheath on it, of course, the, the standard Syat Kali clip system. This one is not the ferro rod and the Velcro pouch on the back. This is the belt sheath, kind of a low-vis version, because that's what I kind of go with. Next thing I carry, my Staccato C2. Uh, this is the C2 DPO, which means, uh, you know, it's optic ready. So the size of a Glock 19, the weight of a Glock 19, the optic I'm carrying is a Holosun 507K. And um, my favorite pistol of all time. The P to me is a little bit too big, especially for my body size, but the C2 seems to fit really well. The mags I use in it are the standard uh, mags from Staccato. 15 rounds, or you can, you can put 16 in it. I just generally load them to 16, so if I ever need to clear and safe, I don't have a bullet rolling around somewhere. The holster I'm using, Tenacor Velo 4. Um, Velo 4 is the appendix carry dedicated holster, so you've got a built-in kind of wedge on the back side, dual clips, so the clip for both my sheath of my, my blade and for my staccato or DCC, discrete carry concepts. I've noticed uh, over time, through the help of the Tenacore guys, the Velo is kind of my go-to for the C2. When I don't carry a C2, when I'm doing a job for a unit that shoots a Glock, I use a Khartoum, but again, Probably the, the best holster that I've ever seen made for appendix. Super comfortable. Uh, don't carry a spare mag. I get that question a lot. Why don't I carry a spare mag? And I answer that question routinely on the internet. I, I've never actually seen or heard of a concealed carry situation or a CCW or a civilian needing a spare mag. I would rather carry a blade, secondary weapon, rather than a spare mag. All right, the last thing here, the belt system. Uh, the belt that I'm wearing is a Tenacore Zero belt. In my opinion, probably the best low-vis slash EDC slash CCW, whatever you want to call it, advent in recent time. Uh, simple belt design here. This one is, a, is kind of a prototype version. This one has a hook and, a hook and pile, you know, for, so for your underbelt. So this is the pile version. If you wanted to put a war belt over the top to stick to this, and this one's a little bit stiffer. So I'm a big fan of this, how it works, obviously. Putting through here, most people know it now, and it just, on friction, just kind of locks off. Things I like about this, uh, super low profile. Uh, there's not a lot of buckle protrusion. So if you do have a red dot on your pistol, if you are carrying a spare mag, if you are carrying a blade in the front, 
This makes it so that stuff doesn't, doesn't poke out. There's no snag hazards there on the cover garment when you're making a draw stroke. The other things people probably don't pick up on the belt, I can, with, my, with just grabbing it with my hand while it's on, I can release tension a little bit if I want to. And I can also uh, grab it and make it tighter. Those are small things and a lot of people might be like, why would you want to do that? Well, if I'm leaving the range, getting in a car and I'm going to do an eight hour drive, I might take this and loosen it just a little bit just by doing that with my hand. But again, it's not going to come undone. The flap that goes on the inside, your excess that goes over. I end up finding that that actually makes it when I mount my blade, the sheath of my blade has now got a little extra padding right there up against my body, it makes it way more comfortable. Also, if you were carrying a spare mag there, you would get the same result. So as far as an EDC belt goes, I don't think you're going to find anything better. And that is pretty much my complete EDC. So uh, check all that stuff out. <laughs>